Hi all, welcome to the world of neural pruning. This is Sudindra. Today, let us understand the important aspects of physics and also a bit of mathematics and biology. Now, everybody is aware of Newton's law. So, let us understand what is this Newton's law. There are three laws. The first one is, the body which is in rest continues to be in rest until and unless there is an external force which changes its state or the body which is in motion continues to be in motion until and unless an external force changes its state. So if you consider any living or non-living being, so everything would be in either two of the states, either in motion or in rest. Right now, if you take an example of, there's a train which is in motion. When the train is in motion, we say that it is in a moving state or if the train is ready to depart so the train is in a rest state similarly anything in this world when we are sleeping we are in rest state when we are awake when we are moving around we are in the motion right so everybody is either in rest state or in a motion state so let me elaborate it later what is the Newton's second law the second law states that force is directly proportion to mass and acceleration. Now, let me take an example. Assume that I like mango fruits. Rather than buying mango fruit, I want to plant it in my backyard. So now, I go into my backyard, I plant a mango plant. So after a few years, the plant turns into a tree and there are bunch of fruits on the tree. Now, I want to pluck a mango fruit. So I go into my backyard, then I go in front of the tree. So I observe, I see which branch of the tree has the fruit. Based on that, then I start applying force on the branch. So assume that I apply a maximum force. When I apply a maximum force, that force is resulting in rate of change of momentum. And then the force applied and the momentum of the object is in the same direction. So now, when I apply the force, then that force is resulting in the momentum on the branch and in turn on the fruit. So the fruit would change its states from the rest state to the motion. When it gets out of the tree, it falls on the ground. So that is the second law. The third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. If you try to apply a force, for example, a minimal force, then the branch tries to push me on the opposite direction. If you observe, when I, whenever you try to apply a force on the branch of a tree, so you are applying it in the x-axis and then the branch would push you back in the minus x direction. So for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So you can observe that all three laws can be applied in this example. Similarly, now you need to understand that every law cannot be applied for every situation. For example, assume that there is a wall. On the wall, you try to apply a force. So when you try to apply a force on the wall, the wall does not change its position. So because the force that you apply will not make the wall to change its position. So in this example, you cannot apply the formula called force is equal to mass into acceleration. So you need to understand where you can apply the Newton law. Let us see few examples of Newton's first law. Assume that I need to travel in a bus. So I go to the bus stand and then I board a bus. When I board a bus, there's no seats available. So what I need to do, I need to stand. So while I'm standing, I hold the strap, okay? Now, I'm holding a strap and the bus is in motion. When the bus is in motion, you need to also understand that my body is also in motion. So now, when I'm holding a strap, after some time, the bus driver applies a sudden brake. When he applies a sudden brake, so my body goes forward and then comes back to the initial position. Do you know why does that happen? because it is due to the first law of Newton. So it states that the body which is in motion continues to be in motion until and unless there's an external force which would change its state. 
right? So when the bus is in motion, my body is also in motion. So when I hold the strap and then when the bus driver applies a sudden brake, so it is trying to come to a rest. So now my body was in motion, so it tries to get into the motion and then it stops coming back to the rest position. So it is due to inertia of motion. So what is inertia of motion? Inertia means the inability of the body to change its state. So right now inertia of motion means inability of a body to change its motion state. So that's the reason the body goes forward. Why forward? Because the bus is moving in the forward direction. So your force also applies on the forward direction before you come back to the rest position. Let us see another example of inertia of motion. So now take a glass of milk, take a spoon of sugar, put it into the glass of milk and then stir it. Stir it for 10 seconds and take out the spoon. If you observe, even I stop stirring, the swirling of milk continues for some seconds and then it stops. So here, what do we observe? We observe that the body which is in motion continues to be in motion. Let us see example of inertia of rest. So what is inertia of rest? The inability of the body to change its rest state until there is an external force that is applied on it. Okay. Now, take a glass of water, cover it with a small sheet of paper, on top of it place a coin. Now, if you try to hold the paper and then with the force, I'll try to pull it out. When I try to pull it out, you can observe that the coin, initially it was in rest position, it does not fall down, it falls into the water. So it refuses to change its rest state. So you would have done this trick, right? So this is an example of inertia of rest, okay? Similarly, we can also think about inertia of direction. So what is inertia of direction? It is again the inability of the body to change its direction. So let me quote an example. Assume that you are traveling in a train. So now what I do is I will throw a ball up in the air and then after few seconds the ball comes back to my hand. Now in this example if you observe the train is in motion. I am also in motion in the same direction of the train. Okay? When the ball comes back, it directly comes back into my hand because you can observe that the ball is also moving along with us. So this is an example of inertia of direction. So you can observe that for the first law, there are three positions that is inertia of rest, inertia of motion and inertia of direction. Okay? So that is the example for or the first law. Now, let us go into the second law. So, what does the second law state? Force is directly proportional to mass into acceleration or the rate of change of momentum is force, right? So, now, you might have observed that when you play cricket, assume that the batsman hits a ball in the air. Now, you need to take a catch. Let me take a catch now. Is it the right way to catch a ball? No, because when you try to catch a ball by being in a constant position, the force that is applied by the ball is huge. So there is a chance of you getting hurt and at the same time the ball may bounce back and you may drop the catch. What is the right way to catch a ball? So this is how you take a catch or you can catch a ball this way. So what I am doing? I am not in the rest position, I am taking the catch this way or this way. If you can observe here, how does Glenn Maxwell takes a catch? So observe this. So this is how you can take a catch. Okay. Now let us see the examples for Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So I try to bounce a ball, the floor gives me a reaction back and the ball comes back to my hands. So now you can observe there is an equal and opposite reaction from the ground to the ball. right? So for every action 
there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now, let us see what law applies. I'll quote you a few examples. While you walk or while you run. So, what is the law that is applied there? Is it the first law, second law or the third law? Guess. Wear your thinking glasses and tell me, what law does it apply? You are right. It is the Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. What we do when we walk or when we run? So, we stamp our foot on the ground. Right? So, now, when you stamp your foot on the ground, there is an action. For that, there is an opposite reaction. So, that makes you to walk or to run. Okay? Similarly, let me give you another example. While you hit a 4, you are bisecting an angle and hitting it. So, the ball is coming in this direction. So, you are making the ball to travel in another direction by a force and then an angle of your bat. So, while hitting a 4, you don't require a lot of force. But, when you hit a 6, the ball goes out of a boundary or goes out of the stadium. So, when Chris Gale hits a 6, they say that, God, this guy has a lot of power or a lot of force is required in order to change the direction of the ball. So, this is where the larger amount of force is required. So, now you tell me which law is applicable here. The law is your second law. Why? Because there is a rate of change of momentum on the ball which is causing the ball to move in the direction of the force applied. So, that is the Newton's second law. You take a bottle of ketchup. You try to squeeze the body. The ketchup does not come out. So, what do you normally do? You move the bottle up and down rigorously and then you try to pinch it. When you try to pinch it now, ketchup comes out of the bottle. Which law is applicable here? Guess. You are right. Newton's first law. These are the different examples that you encounter in day-to-day -day life. Similarly, if you observe, there is an interlink between different subjects. So, physics. So, physics is nothing but you are trying to solve all the questions which are existing within the universe. How do you solve it? By applying the mathematics. So, what is mathematics? It gives you the set of tools and it will tell you how to use it. You use the tools and solve your problems. Problem can be anywhere within the universe. Problem can be between couples. Problem can be between within a family. Problem can be within government. Problem can be within two individuals. Problem can be anywhere. Any problem can be solved using mathematics. Now, what is chemistry? Chemistry is the applied physics. Let me give you an example for that. So, any matter, okay? So, what is a mass? Mass is nothing but a body of matter. So, any matter consists of what? It consists of atoms. So, atoms together forms a mass of a body. So, now, what is an atom? Atom is the combination of protons, electrons and neutrons. So, here, if you study the structure of an atom, that is what the chemistry is. So, what is chemistry? It is the applied physics. Similarly, we human beings are made of various matter. So, now, we as a human being, he consists of a huge mass. So, now, to study the nature of living beings, we use biology. So, now, what is biology? Biology is the complex chemistry. So, now, you can observe that physics, chemistry and biology are interlinked. Whereas, mathematics is an independent subject which can solve any problems within the physical world. Now, let us calculate the force applied when we take a catch in a wrong way. So, what is force? Force is the rate of change of momentum. The formula of force is, force is given by mass into final velocity minus initial velocity by time. What is the unit of force? The unit of force is either Newton or it is also expressed as mass is expressed in kilograms. Then the velocity is expressed in meter per second. The time is expressed in second. So the unit is kg meter per second square. Okay. Now let me assume the mass of the ball is 150 grams. 
So the mass of the ball is 150 grams. Now, if I convert it into kgs, it is 0 0.150 multiplied by, now the final velocity, when the ball reaches my hands, the final velocity is 0 minus initial velocity. When the ball is in the air, assume that the initial velocity is 12 meter per second. So 0 minus 12 divided by, when I take the catch in a wrong way, so the ball reaches my hands within 0 0.03 seconds. So the time is 0 0.03 seconds. So the force is minus 60 newtons or you can also say minus 60 kilometer per second square. Why it is minus 60? Because when the batsman hits the ball in the air, it is in the direction of x. When it comes back to the fielder, it is in the minus x direction. So such a force is also called as retarding force. So what is the force applied when you take a catch in a wrong way? It is the minus 60 Newton or it is also expressed as 60 Newton which is a retarding force. Now let me calculate the force applied on my hands when I take the catch in a right way. Okay. So now assume that the ball is in the air and I take the catch in the right way. So when I take the catch in this way or this way, so there is an increase in time. So now what is the formula of force? Force is given by mass into final velocity minus initial velocity by time. So what is the mass of the ball? It is expressed in 150 grams. So it is expressed in grams and then initial velocity is 0 meter per second. Final velocity is 12 meter per second and the time is when you take the catch in the right way, so you take some time. So the time spent is, assume that it is 3 seconds. So the time spent is 3 seconds. So now when I substitute these values into the formula, as the mass unit is kilograms, I convert the grams into kilograms. So it is 0 0.150 kilograms into 0 minus 12 divided by 3 seconds. So now the force applied on your hands is minus 0.6 Newton. So now you can observe when you take the catch in the right way, the force applied is minus 0.6 Newton. So you can observe when you take the catch in the wrong way, there is a hundred time increase in the force applied on your hands. So you need to remember this. That's the reason whenever you want to take a catch, you need to take it in the right way so that the ball will not bounce out. You can hold the ball. So why it is negative? So I told you it is a retarding force. When the batsman hits the ball in the air, it is, let us assume, in the direction of x. So when it comes back, it is in minus x direction. Such a force is called as what? Retarding force. So that's the reason you need to take the ball in the right way.